Okay, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people say, Amen. Father, we thank you as we can have a practical look at the Beatitudes, the attitudes we're called to be. And so, Father, I just pray right now that we can learn how to, to be these, because if, if, if you can give us grace to really live these, Lord, what a great life we're going to continue to have in the Spirit. So bless these words to our heart, and may they bear fruit into all of eternity. In the precious and all-conquering name, Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When we are meek, are you meek? Yes. That means you're under control. That means you never yell. Did you ever never yell, ma'am? Yeah. Okay. I just saw a flash of lightning by her line. Um, <laughs> did anybody here ever lose it in your life? Did you ever lose it, sir? Yep. Okay. Now, when you lose it, you're not meek. Okay. Now, remember, we just said Jesus losing it. And you, you might remember in John chapter 2, Jesus losing it. You never lose it for yourself. You lose it for people you care about to defend them. Remember, meekness is power under control. Like, I'm not a, a Franciscan all the time. Because if there's a bug coming at me, I might step on it. Amen? Amen. I'm just not going to let go, oh, nice bug. <laughs> <laughs> One day I walked down into the basement of a church. I saw all these little creatures scattering. I just stepped on them and I heard crunch. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I, I had power, but it wasn't under control. <laughs> I crunched a lot of these bugs going by. Amen? It's a guy thing. Amen? Everybody shake your head yes. yes. Now, when you're meek, you say to God, Lord, I don't understand, but I accept. All right, now, I want to give you four things very quickly, and then we'll go into being hungry for the Lord. When you are meek, meekness needs always, number one, to receive God's word. What, God, what are you saying to me? Okay? What are you saying to me? Now, when do you ask God that question? Every day. When you go through a difficulty, have you ever gone through one? Mm -hmm. You say to God, what does this mean for me? So the first thing is, and I'll give you a scripture on that, James 1.21. It means people assume that they don't need it. You need God's word, yes? yes. I'm, I yield myself to what you're saying. I yield myself to what you're saying. So that's number one. When we really want to put into our lives this gift of meekness, I'll take your word on it, Lord. I'll take your word. Number two. <coughs> when you're meek, <coughs> it is our duty to restore broken people. I'll give you a scripture on it. Galatians 6.1. Meek people restore broken people. When you read Galatians 6, 1, and we've been through this like a hundred times, it says restore your brother. Restoring your brother means this. It means he had a broken arm and you've got to do what? Reset. You help put the cast on it. You help seal him back. It, it is important that we look at every human being to get them healed, yes, to what they need. So, what that means for us is this. Um, to really have meekness, you've got to be very gentle with people. I always like to say two things in, in my walk in meekness. Be gentle and firm. Gentle and firm. You, 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 don't, you don't waver what, what God is doing and saying. So how many here are meek in that? You've got to be gentle and for firm. Okay, you can't, meekness is never wishy-washy, amen? Amen. You always, 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 if you're meek, got to give somebody hope. Now, I tell people something truthfully every time I look upon their circumstances. Oh. My first thought, of course, in the flesh is, how the heck did you get into that one? <laughs> decisions, 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 yes? But I say to every person that I come in contact with, basically, there's, your future is very bright. What do you mean? I just got divorced, 
I have swine flu, tsetse itis, um, I, I got gangrene in my toes, I have no money, and uh, my hair is falling out. I don't know where I'm going to stay later on. And you're going to tell me that my future is bright? Isn't that a great word to give people? <laughs> now, why can't they believe their future is bright? Look at my circumstances. And when you are a meek person, you tell people, go beyond your circumstances. Because the circumstances are your walk in being converted more to Jesus Christ. Yes? yes? All your circumstances. No matter what you find yourself. Now, the hardest thing is, <coughs> when we do the Beatitudes, the hardest thing is, that this is the hardest thing. Forget your past. You see, Sister Marie came from a place called Brooklyn. <laughs> we say, forget about it. <laughs> Amen? You can take the girl out of Brooklyn, but you can't Forget take Forget about it. Amen. So, that's Galatians 6.1. Now, the third thing, the third thing that we use when we, we become meek is you are never, 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 if you're meek, you're never, 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 what does never mean? Never. To beat people up with your verbs. We don't browbeat them. Amen? Amen. A Christianity is You've heard the expression, one beggar showing the other beggar where the bread is. I'm, I'm this way, if, if you admire anybody, I'm this way because so far I yielded my life this much in the, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, how much more do I got to do? Infinitesimal. Stretch my hands all the way out as Jesus did on Calvary. You might be the, the Christian that only has opened your life this much. So I definitely look better if I'm out this much and you're only in this much, right? So my, my life might be a whole lot looking better than yours. And I say, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. <laughs> Amen? So the hardest thing to do is forget about your past. And I, I think we have a sin of just remembering our past. Because when, when, you, when your sin is confessed, Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12, Jesus forgets your sins. Anybody glad about that one? Yes. What about good memories? Good memories? You can't let go. No, I, I keep those, honey. All right. <laughs> the fourth thing, the fourth thing is when you are when you're meek, you want to be united and unified with loveliness. You you want these always part of you. The most difficult endeavor you have is to be unified with people. Amen? Amen. I, I, in fact, what does Jesus say now if you're meek? This is so good because most of us have not done this. You're going to inherit the earth. All right, let's break that down. How many would like to inherit? Yeah. Now, everybody in here, now, please, please, do not think I'm giving you the prosperity gospel. I think that's very evil what they're saying. Please understand it in the right sense. Please, okay? Yes. And I'll try to explain it in the right sense. Everyone here, you have an inheritance. Because there's been a death. Jesus died on the cross for you. So everybody here has an inheritance. But listen, you haven't picked it up a lot. Through studying the Word of God, you are picking it up. Amen? Amen? All of you have given me through the day's testimony. And if you say, my life is better, like that man that just called me up at 5 o'clock. He says, I'm coming back to the Catholic Church because of you. So the programs are going out around the world. They're going all over, the, literally all over the world right now. And so uh, I hope soon to get back to streamlining. When one time we were up to uh, 69, 70 countries in the world listening to us at, mm -hmm. at that hour. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I hope to get into world evangelism very soon again. And so now your inheritance is with the death. Galatians chapter 3. Now when Jesus died on the cross, he had to be very meek. He had to be under control. So again, when the whippings were going on his back and his chest and his face, he couldn't scream out and say, stop it. 
He had to be the lamb led to the slaughter, Isaiah 53. When you are meek, you say, here I am. Do with me what you will. How many think you're that meek yet? Because when, when, you, when you yell at me, sir, I'll scream at you and poke your eyeballs out. No, that's not me. It means that I will defend the cause of the what? The just, the, those who are, are weak. I will defend their cause. But ready? I don't necessarily go around putting myself on that same list. Now, to inherit means this. If you want to inherit the earth, what Jesus says there, is everybody see number one, you, there's got to be what? A death. How many here accept that death for your sins? How many here truly believe someone died for you? Do you all believe that? Yes. Someone really died for you. Now, all right, now, there's been, there's been the will read for you. The will is the Bible. The man that called me up tonight says, I can't believe a priest talks like you do. <laughs> I never heard that before. Now, this, this is what inherit the earth means. It's so powerful. You've got to get this. Are you ready to dance around the church? It means to inherit, it means you've received the Holy Spirit. It means that you have the power of the Spirit of God in you. You have entered, not to sound like Star Wars, you have entered the force field. The Father and the Son. When the Father is with the Son, they have a back and forth between them. And that back and forth is the Holy Spirit. Now when you are a Christian, when you're baptized sacramentally in the church, you go right in here. And you are right now, how many are right now? You're between the Father and the Son. What should you all be saying? Heaven, come in heaven to die tonight. Are, are you getting this? So you're in this powerful force, and then you're inheriting. Now, let me give you another example of inheriting. Are you good stuff? When you inherit, it's the woman coming to Jesus who steps out of Israel. Jesus goes to Wichipu area, Tyre, T-Y-R-E, and Sidon. That's up along the coast in Israel. And when that happens, what she was doing and saying to Jesus in essence, look, this woman is absolutely outstanding. I gotta ask my computer what her name is. I'll ask, I'll ask you, you want to find out what her name is? Yeah, let's find out what her name is. And uh, so she was saying to Jesus, something outstanding. My daughter's home demonized. Do you remember the story? And, and, and uh, Matthew 15, Mark 7. She's saying, I have a daughter demonized. And remember she goes for the, she says, a dog, a puppy dog on the crumb? Yeah. Here's what she's saying. I will lower myself as low can low, even thinking canine-like, because even dogs get their inheritance, they get a bone. So she's saying to Jesus, I want my inheritance. And what's the whole power of mercy? What's the whole power of forgiveness? It's getting your inheritance. And one thing I love to remind the Lord is, I need my inheritance now. You already got it. But here's why your life is difficult. Because you don't know how to live in the force field. A little Star Wars tune there. You don't know how to live in, in this and receive it. <coughs> the sin on our parts is this. I think I've got to live like this. How many have ever done this? This is the way it's got to be. Did you ever say that? I guess this, that's not the way it's got to be. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. It's climb time. Amen? Okay? Turn to the verse and next to say, it's climb time. It's climb time. Okay? So do you want to climb or you want to look like this? So now, no matter what has happened to you, 
I, I told you the story before. What gets, there's one story that gets me through. It's a historical story. I, I still like Abraham Lincoln, even though I found out he was a cursor. Mm -hmm. That blew my, my history mind, mm -hmm. okay? So, but one thing, he, he, his whole life, he failed at every single thing. Yeah. Everything, you name it. He didn't make one thing. I said, boy, this guy sounds great. <coughs> And he became the president of the United States. <laughs> and now, when you look at when you look at a five dollar bill, you see his picture every day. But he loved his mother. Okay. So, and by the way, he, he probably didn't go to church either. But we all love Abraham Lincoln. I, I never know if you met a person that doesn't like Abraham. Okay. Right. Amen. <coughs> so now, next, when you <coughs> when you're meek and get your inheritance. How many like your inheritance? You got it, but you're not using it. You never go beyond where God wants you to go. Number one, you never go way beyond what God wants you to do. Number two, I want to give you a little ditty, and then I'll repeat it for you if you want to hear it. Nobody acts big, nobody acts small, everybody acts medium. It is in your power under you to control. Nobody says I should really be big. Nobody says I, I want to be small. Let me be average. Meek is walking the line with God and where he's leading you. I want power that God has given me. I want a heart like Jesus. So that's why when we, you think Catholically of the sacred heart of Jesus, what do you think? You think of this beating heart. <coughs> Amen? So, Sister Marie. So, how many think you could pick up your inheritance tonight? Please pick it up. If you want to have a great rest of your life, you're rich. Amen? Now, here's what that means for you. Not the prosperity gospel. It means you're meant to prosper in the things of God. All right, did you hear me? I'm not saying you're going to have a Rolls Royce outside. I'm not going to say you're going to have a Rolex watch. I'm not going to say you're getting a, a pay raise of $2,000 tomorrow at a UPS. Forget it. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Amen. I'm not saying any of those things to you. Amen. I'm not going to say, honey, let's shake it up. Let's put $10 extra in the collection and God will bless you. One man came running to two months and said, I said, how was your church service today? He says, it was great. I said, did you learn anything about the Lord? He said, yes, I did. I said, oh, good. Tell me. What did you learn about the Lord? He says, I'm finally going to get my, my Rolls Royce. I said, you've got to be kidding. Amen? Amen. So I tripped him, sat on him, and, and wouldn't let him up. And so, I mean, that, that's, and, and you know where he said this in? Inner City Newark. So how many know you like to tell people in Inner City Newark, you're going to get your uh, Rolls Royce? Like, come on. Come on. All right, now, let's look at the next bag. Good stuff? Now, this is, this is, they're all my favorites. Aren't, aren't they good stuff here? Yes. And Jesus says to us, the next one, line is verse number six. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteous, they shall be satisfied. Now, when we look at this word satisfaction, I can't get no satisfaction. Do you remember that word? Yes. Now, satisfaction. Satisfaction is so different from the world's. The world says you eat and you're filled temporarily. Because how many know we go back again? How, how many ever ate and 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 ate? For example, you have Thanksgiving, you have turkey. The next day you have turkey sandwiches. Next time you have... Uh, Turkey pot pie. The next day, you, you have you have turkey pie. I mean, turkey, 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 turkey salad. Amen. Turkey, and then at the end, when it's all ended, you just you have turkey soup. I, I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Amen. Now, when you're in in the Lord, you shall be when 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 Jesus says happy again, you shall be fulfilled. So this is about being fulfilled. You see the word in there. Fulfilled. Hello, are you seeing it? Yes. 
When you're in the Holy Spirit, are you all in the Holy Spirit on a good day? Yes. You are full filled. Now Jesus says to us something strange in John chapter 6, verse 35. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will be not hunger and thirst. But wait a minute, wait a minute, stop there, Lord. I always hunger, amen? How many ever heard of one of these? <laughs> When you're driving in from Mawa, you're... Amen. Amen. You, did you ever hear one of them? Did you ever hear them, man? Okay. So wait a minute. What does he mean there? When you're in the Holy Spirit, you've got to get the Holy Spirit, help me explain. When you're in the Holy Spirit, it is so good. And you said, this is great. You know Miss Kathy, right? Miss yes. Kathy came up to me last night from Richfield. And she says, I have never been this happy in my entire life. Oh, wow. Mm. Jesus. She awesome. says, I see. Oh. And guess what? She says, I'm fulfilled. Mm. And she was smiling. She glowed in the dark. But then what she say afterwards? Please, sir, I want more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you got it? So what is Holy Spirit satisfaction? You're full, filled, and I want more. And God says to you, I have more to give you. Amen? Amen. Now, when you hunger spiritually, um, all of us have deep within us an insatiable hunger. You want to be wanted, it means you see, you saw, you want it, and you have. When you, when you are being, when you hunger for righteousness, you see, number one, you sought it out in the past, you wanted it, and you have it. So that's the plan of God. Seeing, saw, I saw it, I sought it, I wanted it, and I have it. When you hunger spiritually, brothers and sisters, it means I keep searching for the pearl of great price, as Jesus says in Matthew 13. You gotta keep going for it. When I saw Miss Kathy last night, I was in ecstasy. You know what I'm seeing? Those who are really seeking the Lord, their lives are changing right in front of me. People today say, my life is changing. That man called me up out of the clear blue. And you know who is he related to? He's related to my brother. <laughs> They're working. And my brother says, you know what? I said, what? I'm talking about your work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's nice. <coughs> I'm still working on him too. <laughs> Anybody got a few people you're working on? <coughs> now, what does it mean to search for God? Are you all searching for God? What does it mean to hunger for righteousness? It means to search. Right now, I'm asking God for a gift for my life. To learn one new thing about God every day. Did I learn one thing new about God today? I did. And I went, wow. And then what happened to my hunger? There's someone going, rrr, 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 and went. <laughs> now here's what it means. It means to search to know Him. We only know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we only know 52 days of Jesus. Is that amazing? That's all we know. We know absolutely he's a historical figure, and this is how much I know about him right now. St. Thomas Aquinas, you know the story, he said it's all straw. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Toulouse, France, I knocked on his coffin. Thomas, are you in there? Come on out. He was a big boy. Big mama, big mama. And he says, everything I've learned is straw. Mm -hmm. Now, it means this. When I want to know Him, you got to get this, I'll try to go slow. When you want to know Him, it demands that you become hungry. Say you got married. Bum, bum, bum. Say got, his name is Larry. All right, now, when you're married to a guy called Larry and Ray, you still want to know Him and you know him more. 
And when he's getting in his 70s, you go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you know another side of him, amen? amen? And you see a beautiful side of him mostly 100% of the time. But when you search for God. Now, what does Isaiah say? And Amos said, Isaiah chapter 5. What does he say? Uh, uh, Amos chapter 5. What does he say? Those who seek me will what? Find me. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Now, how many know there's coming a time? I was just reading about the second coming, and this is the week of preparing for the second coming. Yes. Do you know when the second coming comes? And I, I just jumped, I jumped off the page and I just went back. Do you know as soon as the second coming comes, there'll never be the gospel again? Here. Does that scare you? Yeah. Mm. As soon as the second coming comes, yeah. and you see Jesus, yeah. and then you give an answer for your life, yes. <laughs> and your judgment day, there will never be the gospel again. <laughs> well, I, went, I went, whoa. Mm. What do you think about that? Now, I want to break this down to hunger and how you hunger. Amen? Yes, yes, yes. All right, now, this is really good. And then mm. I, want to, I want to break down some, some incredible cross-references in the life of St. Paul. Amen? Yes. We're going to really break this down and, uh, on to really hungering. Good stuff? Yes. Now, I've said this before to you, and I, I repeat it, just as... A, now, look at your life. Are you thrilled with it? Yes. You're thrilled with it. Are you thrilled with your life, ma'am? Yeah. Why not? So, well, no. <laughs> yeah. How many are really impressed? How many want to live like her because of that response? <laughs> All right, now. Let me tell you something. Put me in the corner over there. It doesn't look good. All right, now. The marker. When you, when you hunger, you right now... Uh, get a hold of yourself now, right? See everybody in this room? Yes. You have as much of God as you want. Right now. Now, say you live with Godzilla. <laughs> now, Godzilla is not seeking God tonight. But you want to say, Honey, Hun, Pumpkin head. I don't know what you call your beloved. <laughs> you say, you say, I am going to church, but you were just there on Sunday. Usher, would you please usher that woman down? Uh, you were just there, and what do you say? Please, sir, I want more. What do you mean you want more? <laughs> you heard Father Bill, he was non-stop, he didn't come up for air. <laughs> and you want more? Now let, let's break down hunger. Okay, you ready for your, your spiritual... <laughs> now, but you got a hunger for righteousness. All right, now let's break this down. Good stuff, are you getting this? Now, this is the shocking thing. <coughs> We'll break it down. Hunger is a reality of your faith. If you, you know, can, can I, can I scare you? Most of the people in the, in the church, they're starving to death, but they're not hungry. Hmm, am I just contradicting myself? That's true. That makes sense. Hi, we have a great speaker coming to town, and he can, like our deacon that came, please come and join us, do they come? Three months from now, we're going to have a great retreat here and great speakers. Please come and join us. Do they come? No. Who comes? All the outside people. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. Did you notice most of our church groups now are outside mm -hmm. people? Yeah. It's like a collection. Right. Now, when you have this hunger in you, ready? Put a little note there about this behavior. It's the most demanding one. You know why? Because you do it every day. Girl, 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 girl. 
when people get to Yankee Stadium, they just eat anything up on the third deck. <laughs> gurgle, 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 gurgle. Right. Now, it's the most demanding one. Next, it, it, it's, um, it's the mo it's, it's, it has to be fed, right, Father? It has to be fed. It's not about, it's not about you getting righteous. Right, no, no. It's about following logically. From, now, when you look at these Beatitudes, look at the Beatitudes in Matthew 5 with me. Mm -hmm. You've got to go up the step together. You see, Jesus just doesn't throw these at us. They're a step-by-step -step progression in who you are and who you can become. You will change the world upside down. Now, I want, I want you to give notice. Tell everybody living with you to find a new place to live. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just go home now and, say, and give everybody you live with an eviction notice. You're out of here by tomorrow morning. Out. Amen? amen. You're all saying amen to give an eviction notice. No. Why? Because what you need to do is you need to take one step at a time. And God, by the way, when I take one beatitude with another beatitude with another beatitude, guess what? I'm going to be changing. Dun, da, da, dun, dun. And you're not going to know me. So, please give an eviction notice. Your mother will never be the same again. It's time to move out. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Now, are you following what I'm saying? Now, when you, when you have this hunger, it makes you, going through these steps, it makes you absolutely certain you follow Jesus. Because these are so mind-boggling, it changes the world. When you are hungering, you don't look for a convenient way. <coughs> you don't look for, there's no restlessness. You're not, it, 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 you can't worry anymore. He will feed you. Now, <coughs> the Bible says the Lord feeds the poor. Who are the poor? We are. Amen? Amen. What, what does it mean that this is when you hunger and in reality you think, here's what it means. Let's break it down. So clear. Hopefully it's so clear. I'm not where I should be in my relationship to God. Now I want to shock you right now. I'm not where I should be in my relationship to God right now. Does that scare you? Yes. Now I pray. I go to Mass every day, I say the Rosary every day, I do my Holy Hours every day, I'm in the Word of God every day, but guess what? I'm not where I should be. And now, I don't just say to yourself, if He's not where He should be, there's no hope for me. <laughs> when I'm doing this, I look at my life and I said, because you know why I'm not where I should be? Ready? Because I'm being fulfilled every day and I guess what I'm fulfilled now and I'm going to be fulfilled -er 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 more tomorrow so I'm not where I should be I always marvel at Mary because she was there and Mary is where I want to be amen are you getting this now number two Hunger is a requirement for growth. How many of you ever grew up before? Did, is there a person that has grown up here before? What do we say? Well, sometimes your body hurts growing up when you're... And what do we say? Growing pains. Growing pains. The growing pains are your hunger for God. My nephew, I love him. I gave him my card. That's how much I love him. His hair is all the way down here. <laughs> and also, every time I want to see him, I want to get a guitar and go, He loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves you, yeah. <laughs> I love him. I absolutely love him. He knows I love him. And um, so, my little nephew, Tyler, looks at his now uncle, my nephew, my little nephew, and George, my brother, is carrying him around in the church. Praise God, giving his grandson a church tour. Mm -hmm. 
he sees the risen Jesus with long hair. <laughs> <laughs> and so George is carrying his grandson around. Tyler, yeah, Papa, who's that? <laughs> Uncle Matt. <laughs> 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 When you, when you are walking in hunger, it's growing pains, right? Now, let me, let me ask Dr. Lee a question. Would you ever continue to dine at McDonald's ever again in your life? I ever continue to Would you go to McDonald's to anymore? To eat at McDonald's. No, she doesn't go to McDonald's. So nobody can take her to McDonald's for a cheeseburger, Peter. <laughs> You can't go to McDonald's with this woman. She doesn't want to go. It doesn't do anything for her. But what happens to our appetite as we walk? One thing I can't stand doing is chewing gum. You never see me chewing gum. It hurts my teeth. My teeth are bouncing like rubber. Okay, so now when you're in the Holy Spirit, what you used to take in, you don't take in anymore. Mm -hmm. How many, how many say, I used to eat that? Now every time, <coughs> as I got older, I had a McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite word would be, oh, oh, oh. I had, not hunger pains. I had stomach pains. <laughs> and they used me for the next Tum commercial. Tum, ta dum, tum. Amen? <coughs> so, number two, hunger is a requirement for faith. Now, that's why Jesus says these words. In Mark chapter 10, he says to the, to the rich ruler, that little smart aleck, that little sneak. Master, good master, Mark 10. How can I get, to, uh, what must I do to be saved? I kept all the commandments. There's nobody like me. Me, me, me. I'm rich, and now I have, I keep the commandments. What else must I do? What was he doing? He stopped all of his hunger. Because he said, I do this. He put a period. Now, we have a lot of people that flood this church that says, I'm a good person, period. I went to church, period, that's enough. And guess what? They're going to walk out of this church empty. Because they're not little in the... Now, when you have growth, Put a big word by growth, it always spurs you on. Amen? Yeah. Now Jesus country tried to divide the crowd. Now, this is going to shock you. Jesus can't stand big crowds. <laughs> this is going to shock you again. The purpose of preaching the Bible is to get smaller crowds. Because you know why? Remember, we read Luke's Gospel all the time. Crowds don't follow Jesus. They never did. Never. And so what does Jesus do? He, he says the most blessed person before us is, is, is probably the Apostle Paul. Now, Paul had three visions of, of, God, of Jesus. Does anybody know the three, three visions? And they were all growth ones. Do you remember the three visions of Paul? Let's go through them. <coughs> he had three separate personal audiences with Jesus. Does everybody know them? Audience number one was in Acts chapter 9. No yawning. Shaul, Shaul. Why do you persecute me? Amen? What did he do? He fell down. So that's growth number one. You've got to hit your knees. Growth number two was um, in, in Corinthians, he had another, when he was ready to go to, in Corinth, 
He was ready to go this way toward the east. He was going to go to the Philippines and visit the people in India. The Holy Spirit said, no, 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 no. And there was a man dressed like a Macedonian and says, come over here. Come over here. The second part of your spurt of growth is to get your path clarified where you're going. When I have this knowledge of God, I know where I'm going now. Okay, how many would like to have that kind of audience? What's audience number one? Your conversion. What's audience number two that Paul has? Audience number two is what? Where you're going. Now, a lot of you say to me all the time, I don't know where I'm going. Now, what happens when you're really messed up? I'll be right with you. What, what happens when you're really messed up? You say, I don't know what I'm doing. Yes? What was the reference, the, the scriptural reference, Paul being changed on his path? Uh, Acts 18, Acts 19, Thank you. 20. He says, I'm go i I got to go. Now, watch this. The Holy Spirit, when you hunger, sets your direction. And, because why, why has my direction got to change? I've got to find out where the food supply is. What happens when you see all these little fishettes in the, in the water? What do the big, the big galooks do out there? <laughs> they follow the food supply. Now, as you're all believers in Jesus on a good day, follow the food supply. Now, I want to tell you over and over again, you've got to follow in these last days the food supply. Amen. And I think some of you are doing that. This is right. What is the Lord saying? Well, what I'm hearing, you know, you follow when you follow Him, the hunger grows. Yes, it has to. It has to, otherwise, and you can't stop. And so you then you get shocked with Godzilla that you married, and said, "Oh, by the way, um, I've been to church on Sunday. I'm going to Bible study, and I want more. I want to go on Wednesday to another Bible study. I want to go to the discipleship on Thursday." There's a special conference on Friday and Saturday. I'll see you two Christmases from now. <laughs> Do they know how to deal with it? Yeah. They don't know how to deal with your spurt and growth. Now, the third thing about Paul. Is this good, sir? Yes. Yeah. Now, the third thing that St. Paul is going to encounter, all right, now, now you can see how all this comes together. Number one is what? His conversion, conversion, Acts 9. Number two is what? Change of What What this half is. And number three, and this is so important, he gets to see the third heaven. Wow. Second Corinthians 12. He gets to see where he will wind up. Do you know why I'm hungry? Wow. This is right. That's awesome. He you know reached, why I'm hungry? He really reached that far. Yes. Mm. How many would like to hunger to heaven? Yes. yes. Now, do you know why I need to see heaven? Wow. Did That's you ever go through a forest? And, and, and you know that story. You know, I leave a little trail, 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 leave a little trail. I'm going I'm to write a song. And every step of the way. But Jesus warns us. You better follow that trail quick. He tells us a parable that the birds of the air will eat it up. Mm. And those are the four, the first parable our blessed Lord ever said in Mark 4. So if you, you've got to get on that hunger trail, baby. And I don't mean trail nuts and everything else. You've got to be, you've got to, you've got to do it. Sister Philly. Uh, from before when you said that people are starving but they're not hungry, it's like they don't know what they're starving for. Yes. And then you say... Like, it's like you refine each time you get closer, you refine. That's right, you've got it. Right. Sister Marie. Oh, I'm just reading in 2 Corinthians 12. Okay, read it for us. It's just beautiful. I know that this man was caught up into paradise, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know, God knows. I like the way you emphasized it. <laughs> <laughs> and he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast I will not boast. Wow. Sister Marie, what does that tell you? What's that tell you, Sister Marie? He boasts only in his weakness. You only boast in your weakness. Does everybody do that? 
I am weak, but you are strong. strong. Amen. Yes. Amen. What, is, what did we learn? Boast in your strength. I like a guy with abs. Dun da 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 <laughs> okay, did, did everybody see Paul's three audiences with Lord Sister Marie? Yes, this is awesome. Now, are, are you still hungry? Yes. By the way, after this, we all got to go out and eat now. Something, <laughs> there's something. Yeah. Now, Paul says, this is the most scary thing he said. Go with me to Philippians 3. Who wrote Philippians? Oh, okay, very good. My mother says you're a smart girl. Now go with me, now watch this. Go with me to Philippians 3. Who wrote Philippians? Who wrote Philippians? Go eat popcorn, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, okay. <laughs> How do I remember where, where Philippians is? G-E-P, go eat popcorn. <laughs> Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, go eat popcorn. <laughs> That's why I say to myself, uh, I'm saying to myself, uh, where's, where's Philippians? Going popcorn, going popcorn. <laughs> All right, now, look at 3.8. Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. Not the Philippines. He says there, Indeed, I count everything as lost because of the suppressing worth of knowing Christ, my Lord. Wow. You know, I know we're all suffering. I know we're all broken people here. There's nothing like knowing Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> the ultimate. Amen. Now, watch this. This is really good. For this is sake, I have suffered the loss of all things. How many feel like you lost a lot in life already? Now, the Bible says in Joel that God's going to make up everything you lost. Did you hear me? Now, why are you so sad, sir? Can I tell you why you're sad? Because you think you lost a lot, but go, you could have followed Jesus and you're getting everything back. Amen. 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 <coughs> Hallelujah. Sorry, sorry. Everything that we're doing is... How many, how many? Ain't it glad to be a Christian? Now watch, this is really good. Paul goes on to say, Sister Marie, are you catching this now? Yes. And he says there, and count everything as refuse. That's, that means stunky dust. <laughs> In order that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, and ha not having a righteousness of my own. So this is not me. This is hunger for His righteousness. What does that mean? Let's spell it out. I want God living His life through me. Amen. The greatest compliment I've ever received in my entire life the greatest. I see Jesus in you. That's it. It's nothing of what I do. It's what He is becoming in me. And that's because I'm hungering for that image. Next he says there, and he says now, this is, this is where I want to get to. For, uh, the righteousness, this righteousness, from God that depends on my faith that I may know the power of his resurrection. Now remember we told you your inheritance is what? To go in between that dynamic of the father and the son. When you're in that dynamic you're in a power. And then he says there becoming like him in his death. Now look at verse 12. I not that I have already attained this. What is Paul saying? I got to keep hungering. Mm -hmm. I haven't attained it. So what's he going to hear? Now watch this. This this is this is ultimate time of hungering for the Lord. Are you getting this, ma'am? Yes. Is it good? Yes. Now watch this. How do you really hunger? Go to Philippians four. Now you can understand some other words that he has told us. 
Do you all hunger for Jesus here? Yes. And you wouldn't be here if you didn't. Yes. Now look with me down in verse 12. Chapter 4 of Philippians, verse 12. Not that I complain of want. When you hunger, you don't complain. I'm just going to the food source. Now listen, things are really bad out there. I don't want to get you discouraged. Behind the scenes, I told you many times, it's not good. And the arrows of doubt and discouragement have shot through my head and my heart. And I just got to do a Saint Sebastian, fuck them out. <laughs> and sometimes that, the, the poison arrow has dipped down to my stinking thinking. Do you stinking what? Thinking. Thinking. How many ever had, how many have stinking thinking here, nobody? Hmm, now watch this. <laughs> then Paul says here verse 12. <laughs> Verse 11, not that I complain of want, for I have learned. Now, what, what is that? Learning is a hungering for righteousness. I have learned in whatever state I am. How many think you really are? Why don't we do this? Just scratch that verse out of the Bible. It really doesn't. We don't really believe that. I've learned to be content. And what does John the Baptist say in Luke chapter 3? The soldiers came up to John and says, what do we got to do to be saved? And I love John because all the disciples work on the UPS. You know what he said? He said, be content with your pay. <coughs> You're kidding, I only make $4 an hour. Be content with it. <coughs> be content with your pay. So how many here are that content? Now, Paul hasn't attained it. He said, I will never... Now, what does it mean to hunger for, for righteousness? I will never attain it here. So guess what I got to do? There, there it is again, Sister Marie. Because I never attained it here, what do I got to do? I need a third audience with God. What do I got to do? I got to see heaven. I got to see it. Do I see it? Yes, I do see heaven. Yes, I do see heaven. Next, he says there, now here, here's the scary thing about your life. Don't stay as you are. That's called being static. See all these people that come to the church today? They are dull people. Dull. They would never invite me over for dinner. They're too dull. <laughs> Amen? Amen? One day I was preaching down Tom's River. You ever hear that town? Yeah. And I came in, I, I, was, I was talking to um, a group of Protestant women. They like me. All the Protestant women like me. And one, one lady walked in, I knew I was in trouble. She had blue shoes on, <laughs> blue socks on, Wee! all the way up here, blue skirt on. She had a blue, blue blouse on. And she had a blue hat on. I said, This lady's blue. <laughs> now I came in. And I sat down and we had dinner and time. We eat first and burp and, and she says, Oh Lord. Because I wasn't very talkative, you know. She said, Who did we get? Mm -hmm. oh. I got up there behind the pulpit and went, wham, zam, bam. She went. <laughs> Her blue hat went, woo. She got preach it, man. Preach. And she got really, I mean, she was shaking her blue. <laughs> Amen. Are, are you getting this? She thought, she, can you imagine? She thought I was a dull person. Dull. <laughs> Amen. One day I went to Sandy's daughter's wedding. They put me at tables with dull people. <laughs> I'm sitting there. How are you? All right, bye. Fine, all right, yeah, fine, yeah, all right, all right, fine, yeah, all right, all right. And I said, I need to stretch my legs. <laughs> so I went back, this is Red Bank, I went in the back looking at the boats to see which one I want to get on. And so I saw all the smokers and the drinkers. I said, I'm going near them. They were the life of the party, the smokers and the drinkers. 
Sorry. And then I walk in, wait, wait, wait. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I should get back to church. I said, yes, you should. <laughs> My kids are going to CCD. I said, please give them the other 24 letters of the alphabet also. <laughs> She said, you want to meet my fiance? He's here? She said, yeah. I said, bring him in. Hey, how did it go, man? I looked at her and said, don't marry him. <laughs> I had a great time. And meanwhile, inside, they're looking for me. I'm with the smokers and the drinkers. Hey, Bob Bill, you want one? I said, no, 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 <laughs> you want a puff? No, I don't need a puff. No. I, I just took 10 cc's of Corinthians. <laughs> I, 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 the sinners excited me, amen? Because I could talk to them. They wanted to talk to me about the Lord. They were hungering, and I was telling them where to get the food. Inside, they were... I think they dine and I want to throw dirt on top of them. Mm. Amen? <laughs> when, you, when you know him, listen, Paul is still hanging on to know him. Do not hang on to your dissatisfactions. I can't get no. When you're, when you're searching for righteousness, do not seek your dissatisfactions anymore. Is this good stuff? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. We wallow in our dissatisfactions. Mm -hmm. Next, point number three. Is this good stuff, Sister Marie? Yes. When you hunger for righteousness, do you know why you got failures? Anybody ever failed before? Mm -hmm. When you hunger, it's never a reason for your failures. When you hunger, you don't... How do I know if I'm hungry? Here's how you know if you're hungry. I don't feel like eating. Did you ever do one of them? And you need it all day. I don't feel like eating. Here's how you know if you're hungry. You don't eat if you're satisfied with yourself. I'm so pretty, oh so pretty, there should be more of me. You can't hunger if you are self-satisfied. Mm. Number two, you can't hunger if you're happy about you. Now you can't go to the other stream. You can't, you're, how many know you're not allowed to put yourself down? Third, you, do you have a desire to really go for God. Now let's be honest. Most people in your family aren't here tonight. Do they plan to come anytime soon? No. They don't hunger. But they're st remember they don't hunger but they're what? Starving. Okay. They don't hunger but they're starving. Everybody got it? Yep. Now, what is the main reason you get hungry? Your problems. Now watch this. Is this good? Did yes. you write that down? Yes. I want to tell you the most outstanding thing about the Bible to bring it to your practical level. You can't have the power of God until you get a problem to get to it. Is that like Adam? Yes. I can't ask Jesus for a miracle until, until I need one, until I have a, a problem. Look at all your problems. No, don't tell me. You look at them. <laughs> if you didn't have that problem, would you have sought God more? No. Prior to the problem, how much were you seeking Him? What's the most important thing of your life? To seek for righteousness. And, and what's the promise? Of those who seek for righteousness, they shall be what? 
satisfying. Are you getting this? Now, the problems, every problem you have makes you hungry. I hate problems. But realize if I'm going to grow, I need them. Mm -hmm. Now, when you believe in the gospel, does anybody believe in the gospel on a good day? Yes. When you believe in the gospel, true faith in Jesus never burdens you. You cannot be a Christian following Jesus correctly and be a burdened person. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard that. You can't be burdened. Jesus has come to me. There's the meekness. And we're going to go through how Jesus practiced all of these Beatitudes in his life. At the end, we're, we're, going, to, we're going to have fireworks. Get ready for fireworks. Now, the next thing he says there, what do you do if you don't hunger? Hmm. I go, hmm. Now, I want to break this down as we close. I can't believe it's, it's, it's time. Wow. It does go, zip, zip, zip. I, I, flip with me, please, to Psalm 142. Psalm 142, please. Who wrote, who wrote the psalm? Yeah. Dave, how many did you write, Sister Marie? 73. 73, very good. I want to break down, now what do you do if you don't hunger? All these people today, they've been invited, they're not here. Amen? Amen? Now Psalm 142. Spiritual hunger doesn't do the following thing. <coughs> Let me give you three things it doesn't do. <coughs> spiritual hunger doesn't eat. Number two, spiritual hunger doesn't lose appetite. Number three, spiritual hunger, and this is the worst part I want to tell you, it's easy to drop out. It's easy to drop out? Yes. For example, next month is January. It's gym month. You need to lose weight, madam. Sir, your love handles are coming out all over the place. <laughs> I'm going to join a gym. Great. Let's sign up. You go the first week and then you drop out. But meanwhile, you just paid this enormous amount of money. Amen? Amen. They're getting all geared up for your gym equipment that you're going to buy and use once and put away in, in your cellar for the rest of your life. And your Buddha will continue to grow. <laughs> Are you kidding? Now, when you read Psalm 142 with me, are you with me? I cry with my voice to the Lord. With my voice I make supplication. I pour out my complaint. Now, underline pour out. When you pour out to God, it means a non-stop faucet. I pour out my complaint before Him. I tell my trouble. Does this sound like what, you, what we just said? I tell my trouble before Him when my spirit is faint. You know my way. Yes, everybody put a star by verse 3. When my spirit is faint. Now, when you're a believer in Jesus, Isaiah 43 says, You will run and not faint. You will not grow weary. And what does Paul say at the very end of 1 Corinthians 15? Don't grow weary. Well, what, is it, what does that mean? Let's break it down, break it down, and break it down. It means you've got to... Now watch this. You've got to keep on doing your daily diet of spiritual exercises in the Lord, and then you've got to do what? Ready? Increase them some more. Oh no. You go to one Bible study? You want another one? Oh no. You want more? Oh no. Goodbye, Mom. I'll see you. I'll see you in Groundhog's Day 2020. <laughs> and they get mad that you are getting satisfied with the Word of God, the Eucharistic Adoration, and the life. They're mad at you. They said, You've abandoned me. I got this hunger. Okay, now watch this. Good stuff. So put that in verse 3. In the path where I walk, they have hidden no trap for me. I look to the right and watch, but there's none who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No man cares for me. I cry to you. Now, when you're hungry, you can put in your, your hunger pains. You hear that? Amen. 
I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Give heed to my cry, for I am very low. Deliver me from my persecution. Now, what is a persecutor? Someone who pursues you all the time. Now, what is physical hunger? Physical hunger means you continue to eat and eat and eat and eat. Physical hunger can go away and it does what? Comes back. Go away and comes back. Go away and comes back. When somebody is very, 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 very sick physically, they don't want to eat anymore. So what have we got to do? Send a, t a tube down. You can lose your hunger for God by neglect. Amen? Yes. You can use uh, your hunger for God. Is Now, when you hunger for God, the more you get. So, how do you get back on track if you lose it? You're not going to like me saying this to you. It's time to force feed. What does that mean? I don't want it, I'm tired. Get your rear end in that church. You know what one man told me? It looks like they have, he has a problem with his wife. And so I only see him and his wife in church. And I said to him, Hey, how's it going? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And to say, where's your son? Is your son okay? Oh, yeah, he's fine. Um, he just wanted to sleep in. It's his last day of vacation. So the father, who goes to church every Sunday, gave a free pass to the son. What's he setting up his son for? Not hungry for God. And here's why your kids don't hunger for God. You didn't explain to them where the food was. I don't want my little baby nephew to think Jesus is Saint is his uncle Matt. <laughs> <laughs> All during Thanksgiving, I'm staring at this little kid. I said, "Listen, you little kid, who baptized you?" And then Dee Dee, my niece, is changing him. And then he said to him. And she's getting, he's getting changed. Mommy, who baptized you? Mommy, who baptized you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting this? Now, the problem is, I can never afford ever to go into neutral. Now, I've got to tell you something about the Greek. What does it say there in Matthew? Are you getting this? Is this good? What does Jesus mean now? When you will be filled, right? What does it say there? I want to quote our Lord correctly. Good stuff? Good stuff. Sister Marie, are you learning anything new? Yes. Now, what does it mean there? Blessed are those hunger and thirst. That's, that's our condition for righteousness. And what does it say? But they shall be satisfied. Can I tell you what satisfied means in Greek? This will blow your mind. Ready? This will absolutely blow your mind. It means fatten up the animal for the slaughter. Oh, it's fully prepared. Mm. Circle the word satisfy there. The Greek is fatten up the animal for the slaughter. Mm. Now, jing jing, what does that mean? When Jesus welcomes the prodigal son back, Luke 15, what does he say? I will bring you a fatted calf. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? There's no vegetarians. You're eating because the Father is going to make you some good stuff. One woman said to me today, I can never be a vegetarian. I said, don't enjoy your steak. <laughs> you will eat it and you will like it. Amen? Amen. Now, what do you think of that, Sister Ray? That's what Jesus so is saying. Feed you. Yes. But it's it's now. <laughs> when you go to heaven, you're all going by God's grace? Yes. You're getting the fatted camp. So uh, the Hindus are going to get a shot when they're saved and go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so glad, glad when they all come over to your house tomorrow, they say, hey, let me give you a scripture. You're going to eat the fatted calf, baby. Amen? Amen. You're going to eat the fatted calf. 
Amen. 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 Okay, with the red flags and everything else. You're going to eat the fat of calf if you hunger for God. Amen. Sister Marie. Now, what else does it mean? That's what it means to be satisfied. The fatted calf has been <coughs> stuffed. Now, say you're Italian. Yeah. You took your turkey and you stuffed it with spaghetti and meatballs. That'll do it. No, you How many? Anybody have turkey this no. Thanksgiving? Yes. Did you stuff it? Yes, we had stuffed it. Did you stuff it, ma'am? Now you get now. Think of your stuffing. And, 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 and did you prepare the bird, ma'am? No, I didn't. When you prepare the bird, anybody? Did you prepare the bird? Mm -hmm. When you prepare the bird and stuff and stuff it, that's what it means to be satisfied. <laughs> and what happened? <laughs> I was on a turkey farm. I found that the most interesting thing about turkeys. They're up in trees. I think these things are going And all of a sudden, Mother Nadine comes up to me. Father Bill, I said, yes, Mother Nadine. I want you back next year to talk about the second coming. I said, I'll come back. And I look up, and these turkeys are sitting in trees. I said, look you, behave up there or you're going to be my dinner soon. <laughs> So what does it mean? What does it mean to be fast? Stuff it, stuff it, stuff it. Now Jesus says something very interesting about stuffing. I'll end with this. Are you getting this? You ready to dance around the church? When you're stuffed in the spirit, okay, when you're stuffed in the spirit, how many ever felt you had a good plate of the Holy Spirit? When you stuff, listen to what he says, and I'm done. I am done. I am done, Larry. Larry, Larry, I am done. When you're stuffed in the Spirit, here's what he says in Luke 6. If I could find it. In Luke 6, he says, I don't know if I could find it. Oh, yeah, I found it. I think, is that it? Oh, yes, yes, okay. Here's what it means to be stuffed in the Spirit. And by the way, when you're stuffed in the Spirit, can you get more in? Yes. How many ever had a dessert and you wish you could have 20 more pieces? Mm -hmm. But you knew if you had 20 pieces, you'd be like, I can't eat another piece. But how many know when you're in the spirit, you have another piece and another piece? No calories. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, when you're stuffed in the spirit, here's what Jesus says in Luke chapter 6, what verse? What verse 38. I'm, gonna, I'm going on the second half of it. Okay. All right, and we're done. Give and it will be given to you. That's not the part I want to emphasize. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put into your lap. Now, let me give you an image. Did you ever pack your bags before? Mm -hmm. And you got one more thing to get in. <laughs> and did you ever do this? Boom, 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 boom. Sit, crush, get out. Amen? Yep. I told you the story. Came back from Israel. Father Joe Marwis, my one, he's a great roommate. He says to me, um, I can't get any more in my, my luggage. Will you carry this to the United States? I said, okay. But I got my luggage to El Al, and they said, sir, yes, that'll be $75. I said, what? And guess what? Nowhere to be found to give me the $75. <laughs> so I had to whip out my credit card and, and pay it. By the way, I didn't collect on that priest yet. Where is, I gotta tell him that he owes me $75. And then they give you a slip and then I had to go into the cashier and pay 75 bucks for him stuffing his, his trinkets into my uh, <laughs> luggage. Amen? <laughs> Usually my, my luggage is like, 22 pounds going, and about 18 coming, all right? I, I don't stuff with things, amen? amen. So when you're, a, when you're a believer, and God's going to stuff that animal for the slaughter, and stuff it, and stuff it, and stuff it, that's what satisfaction means. What do you think, man? Good stuff?
Father, we just pray that we can live these Beatitudes as hunger and thirst for righteousness. And we will be satisfied. So may we be satisfied and, and have the spirit of joy and the fruits that never change. And Father, we just pray right now in the mighty name of God that we will be brought to the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, I just pray that we'll be lifted up and enter in to thy, thy peace and thy joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Next week, we're going to talk about mercy like you've never heard it before. It's the last one for the, for the year. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness of the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, the crown of the world, seeking the rule of souls. Amen. Good stuff? Good stuff.